Okay, this Fender is a 1968 Telecaster. Um, blonde finish, maple neck, but this is a maple cap. So what I mean by that is no skunk stripe on the back of the neck here. Uh, the skunk stripe was how they inserted the truss rod. There would be a brown strip over here and they would insert the rod this way. These maple caps, it's like a rosewood board, but it's maple. They put the, the rod in and then they put the fingerboard on top of this. So it's kind of a two piece uh, maple neck um, they only did this for a brief time in the mid to late 60s with the maple caps. Uh, it's a lacquer finish neck, um, in very nice shape. Just a great, great old Telecaster. Okay guys, this is a very, very rare Gibson flat top. This is called the Jumbo. This is before the J35, before the J45 and 50. Um, it's a, one of the first dreadnought guitars that Gibson ever made. As you notice, the inlay on top just says Gibson, but it's in pearl, where the later, the J35s and the J45s and 50s had the decal up here. This is inlaid pearl, um, mahogany sides and back. This guitar is a little hammered, but this thing is one of the best sounding Gibson guitars I've ever played. Possibly a little bit deeper than a J35 or J45. Um, just really cool, cool guitar, tortoise uh, pickguard, rosewood bridge and fingerboard. Just a cannon of a guitar. Ultra rare, the Jumbo, 1934. So guys, this is a Gibson LO, very early flat top that's all mahogany. This one is in stellar condition, one of the cleanest ones I've ever seen. This is, I believe, 1929, and just in remarkable shape for as old as it is, and great playing and sounding guitar. And this is similar to like the Robert Johnson guitar. It's not exactly, but pretty similar, and it's in that same family, an LO. Hey everybody, Norm, and uh, this to me is one of the greatest jazz guitars, electric jazz guitars ever. This is a 1964 Gibson L5 CES in pristine condition. A little bit of wear here, but I mean really clean. Two piece back, um, two PAFs. Now this is a 64, but they still had PAFs at that point. Tune Matic Bridge, gold parts, ebony board, um, beautiful flower pot inlay, gold parts, beautiful, um, you know, binding, multiple ply binding, and the uh, uh, later style, uh, early, early 60s knobs in gold with the volume and tone insert. Just a really beautiful example. This one, I believe my buddy Grant Geisman has asked me to hold it for him. I think this is going to be Grant's guitar. Just a fantastic art shop collection. So this uh, Martin Acoustic, it's a Dreadnought, but it's a very unusual guitar. This is a D21. So anything over 18 is generally rosewood or Carina or Koa wood or, um, you know, maple or something else. Um, this is Brazilian rosewood, 1957 D21 tortoise guard. Uh, it's got the binding on top, similar to a D18. So when you first look at it, it looks like a D18, but it is in fact Brazilian rosewood. And uh, so a little uh, understated, but really cool. Uh, spruce top, tortoise guard, rosewood board and bridge. Um, just the simple black binding, multiple binding there. Um, just a cross between the D18 and the D28. It's a very cool guitar. So this is a very, very cool guitar. This is, I'm sure it was a special order. This is a 1965 Gibson Johnny Smith. But this is factory with no pickups. There's no holes on the side of the neck for the Johnny Smith pickup. This was ordered dry. Very unusual and very unusual in red. Um, these guitars hardly existed in this unless somebody custom ordered them. And I've had several, but there's very few of them around. Just beautiful flame back sides, uh, ebony fingerboard. Unlike the L5 that comes so little, um, 
you know, curlicue pin here. Um, it's cut straight across, ebony board. Uh, this one is nickel plated, not gold plated. I guess the guy, that's the way he wanted it. And just a beautiful, beautiful example and something that you never see both being dry, no pickup, and in the factory red. Just a very rare guitar. All right.